and welcome, welcome back everyone to the Triforce podcast. That's right, we're still going. Uh, it's Plot still on. somehow. How long has it been? Jeez, oh, it's like a fever ages. dream. It's a long <laughs> the, old the shift. Yeah. It's a big one. It, it is. We're still on duty. Yeah. Um, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna keep going with the randomness, the chats that you know and love. Oh yeah. Uh, the community updates. I'm sure. Hopefully, P Flax has got some emails uh, or notes. To, he's got some. He's got, he's got stuff. Don't worry. That we can be critical of. He always and... comes correct. He, he comes prepared. He knows what he's doing. That's how I roll. That's just how he rolls. I'm excited. So, first off, what we got? Go on then, hit me. I'm prepared. For what? Yeah, I got two victory royales in a row on Fortnite the other day. Um, you because I'm a, Fortnite? I'm a tw- I'm a 12 year old kid apparently who plays uh, Fortnite. Really? They did some. Yeah, they there's um some Wu Tang tie in stuff like uh, skins and, and stuff. <laughs> oh my god! Somehow. They finally dragged you in. <laughs> you know, I, I always wondered brand brand why they added stuff like that into games like Wu Tang. Come on, and then. This is why. It this is why. The, the this is why. A 42-year-old man is somehow tempted to play the game now that there's some Wu-Tang paraphernalia. They got wu wear in there. They got some skins. They got a surfboard that says dollar dollar bills, y'all, when you when you deploy it and stuff. Holy mm. shit. It's everything I ever wanted and uh, and more. And man, I'm so thrilled to play that game for two hours a week and, uh, and get two back-to-back wins as well. God, did you do it good. on your own or did you do it with... I was, in a, I was in a squad. I had some All buds right. playing with okay. me, so it was fine, you know. But um, yeah, it's a weird one. Like, well, the thing is, now they've changed. There's a new mode in Fortnite called No Builds. Uh, mm. So you don't have to worry about people putting stairs and walls and shit in front of you while you're trying to kill them. Um, it's just like a more of a like a traditional Any other game battle royale. Yeah. So like Apex and all the others. Like yeah, Apex it's more... and all the other ones. Yeah. It's removed the unique selling point yeah. because the unique selling point was garbage. Um, yeah, yeah. Which I think, you know, some people probably still like, you know, like diehard die hard fans uh, will still play the uh, the build mode one. But now mm. there's the option to play without, which seems pretty popular as well. So, you know, whatever. But um, it did seem unnecessary convoluted in a sense. The way, it, I mean, it was envisioned as something which it wasn't, you know, I think. Yeah. If you were creating a game, you think, oh, it'd be really cool to let people build their own little castles and try and survive for as long yeah. as they can. Well, that's the thing. You Now, now sometimes I, I think people forget themselves because you're just looking at an open field and there's just some dude out there flossing and you're like, what's he doing? And you kill him. And I think it's like, a you know, when you were able to build, you could build a wall and floss behind it, you know, but now you can't. So they forget. They just start flossing out in the open and die and you know, it's game over, buddy. Like, yeah, uh, you know, try again, I guess. You know, maybe better right. luck next time. But is the community lighter though in that sense? I mean, obviously, there's loads of kids playing it, but do they take it less seriously? Like, because is it how sweaty is it? It's, it's I guess it's not that sweaty. It's a pretty sweaty game. I, okay, I, like every BR is right. Like, it just attracts that type of player who's like ultra competitive and just wants to fucking click heads, dude, and like all that. You know, there's lots of dudes and dudes and bros being thrown around and um you know like it, it all sounds really serious like depending on like who you're watching or listening to or whatever um but again i think most be i think most battle royale games are like that you know you can't get away from that that mindset you know like that it's like a like a turbo gamer mindset mm. you know it's not just somebody chilling out you know, making a prison or, you know, having a nice time build, planning out some roads in a city or something. These these guys are, they're, they're out, they're out to kill, you know, they got the, they got the bloodlust. They want to win. They want to mm. get all the big victory royales at any cost. So don't get in their way, you know? So they get more digital trainers if they do more wins. I don't I, understand how. There's all worked. sorts of stuff you get. There's battle, it's, it's all the usual, you know, addiction keeping you in the game battle passes and this and that there's like it it just shits out little rewards every once in a while that keeps you keeps you keen sort of thing i mean it's like every game does that now right like there's different tiers though i mean at least like that you were able to get most of the rewards there was a point where when you played hearthstone for free for example yeah it didn't really matter as long as you played it. You did your quests every day. You could pretty much get all of the new stuff unlocked within a certain time frame. 
Yeah. But uh, over time, that has shifted to these things just being only if you grind it like 16 hours a day. Can you, yeah. uh, you know, it's feasible for someone over the three months that the battle passes out. They've done the maths. So you're like, okay, if you grind, you know, 16 hours a day of this game for three months, you can unlock everything. You know, yeah. so that way they can say, this game, you can unlock everything. It's free. I mean, um, a lot of a lot of the foundation of the psychology is is based in and around that the the fear of missing out, right? Like uh, that's how you you could perceive them to be generous, when, where whereas they're not really being that generous. Like you know, you you can get a battle pass for in game currency, which you should already have on a new account or whatever, and then it it kind of starts at like a chain where you know if you play enough and you unlock that battle pass that you that they pretty much give you you'll get enough coins to buy the next battle pass, right? So you can kind of mm. meander your way through the game without spending money if you like. But, um, you know, if you go away for two weeks or something like that and you miss out on, you know, some exclusive stuff, you know, like the shop is always rotating around. and, and Yeah, whatever. or your parents, like, you know, your, don't let you play Your parents play that night, imprison you and you know. steal the credit card. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? Like, it, 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 I think if you're really, really into it, you might feel like, oh, crap, you know, I'll never be able to get that one again. So I, I just got to play more or something. Like, I think it feeds into that, you know, which is not great, but here we are. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just it's the way it is, I it's guess. The, it's nice to be aware of it, that's all. Yeah, even for if, sure, yeah. And it doesn't mean that you can't have fun with these things. To yeah, some that's it. Yeah. I just, just, it's like it's like we're surrounded by spike pits, though. You know, in gaming, you know, yeah. any of them, we could just get addicted, like, like just get. Oh, hmm. the tie-ins in for like pit. for Fortnite. I guess Modern War. I guess Call of Duty is the same, right? They got like a Snoop Dogg operator pack now. Um, you know, you can get like a, a, you can be Ariana Grande in in Fortnite. <laughs> he struggled to say I that. Could, Ariana, I'm Ariana. Grande. I, I'm like completely like I, I only just like kind of uh, became aware of her like maybe two weeks ago. Wow. So okay. I'm sorry, I live under a rock it's because of um, Fortnite. I love that that she is help that Fortnite is helping educate you in like current pop trends. Oh and God, yeah. I mean, cool it's really stuff. really. Really useful stuff. So, for me. can you like, can you dress up as the 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 killer? Oh, what's this called? Um, the, ghost the face. big, the big ghost, ghost face. face killer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and, no, and it's not. Others. It's not like um, it none of like none of the members are in it. It's just like it's like gear, you know. Like they got a clothing range called Woo Wear. So like, which which they made in like the nineties or whatever. So there's like you know Woo Wear hoodies and stuff like that in it, and. Uh, and so it, you can look and, like uh, a '90s hood rat, basically. Well, not really. I mean, it's it's you know, it's it's Fortnite, right? And it's <laughs> oh, right. I see. It's, so it's, it's aimed at like it's it's aimed at kids of of the day, right? So it's a lot of like I don't know, whatever fucking kids wear now, you know, like what's what's the big fashion like that? Like that workout, but not not working out gear. I guess is like the is the one now, right? Everybody's got those fucking um. Like a shiny golden hoodie. And yeah, like a shiny bombs. golden hoodie, and then just like uh, exercise pants, you know, with like <laughs> yes. that have like tattoos. They have like the meshy see through yes. bits at the bottom of the leg or whatever. I, I think that's like it's all shit like that. Now. Wheelies are they coming back round? I don't know what um, those are. They're like the heelys. the tr the tr heelys. Sorry, yeah. Heelys. Uh, do you mean the, the like the uh, shoes with the uh, with uh, rollers at the bottom? Yeah. Like, oh I, yeah, uh, those are awesome. My my my. Uh, eldest and youngest daughter both want them um and i said i would only get them if mrs f agreed that we could all get them oh my god and i knowing that she would never agree for that in a million years and and therefore we haven't had the the horror of watching a child healy towards heavy traffic so yeah is... so, you, so you're not going to be the healy family you're, you've i'm decided. not no. i'm not concerned about them healing you into heavy traffic because they'll be fully balanced i'm concerned about you snapping your fucking like <laughs> yeah. your your fibia or whatever my just go, go straight He's to hospital yeah. man my kids got some for christmas they asked for some for christmas and they got some for christmas but i don't think they've used them once like it's kind of what do you it, fucking think they've not been like outside well, Between the fucking <laughs> pandemic, the fucking shit weather. No, but and, I mean, you know, they go outside, but the problem is, is you there's don't... nothing to take them outside. You, we don't, yeah. well, you don't really want them outside on their own with, like, something that makes them go fast, you know? Like, especially close to roads and stuff. I don't know if you feel the same, Flax, but it's like... They I, need supervision, and sometimes... I kids being near roads, yeah. yeah. There's, there's a, a friend of um, my youngest, she went, she went to hers yesterday after school to play. 
And um, there are two things happen. First of all, as we as I was walking to ghetto, uh, you've got to walk past you got hit a by bit a car. of dual carriageway. No, I didn't. Oh, man. You've got to walk past a bit of dual carriageway. Is it one of those Fuck ones that. where it has the bridge with like the fucking? Uh, it looks like 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 you, like the the connector bridge for a prison. It's got like the. It, they are always utter shit. Yeah, they the look yeah. so fucking uh, dystopian, don't they? It looks like when they were building the town. They built that in the very early stages of the town when they didn't have much money. Yeah. As the town has now grown, they haven't bothered upgrading the It's bridges. always got like That's a metal like. mesh shell over it, right? And it's like Yeah, it's like what what is this piece of garbage? And, like, and you know you... these things cost a fortune. I know, as well. and then when you walk through them, like on a hot summer's day, they stink too, right? Like the metal that like, heats up and stuff and it starts to smell. I haven't noticed that, oh. but I'll I'll keep Not only out. that, yeah. but like in London, everything's kind of the tube or, or some motorway has come through this fucking area as well, and there's another shitty bridge like near yeah. it, kind of in a twisted, you know, dystopian it's just fucking the... You know, yeah. it's sad. When when you look at older things, um, I feel like there was some craftsmanship that went into making it try to look nice. Now, we're just happy with a fucking slab of metal that we looks We just need wank. to get this through, yeah. Just mm. put a brace down. It's, but it just adds to the layers of, of disgust that people have for their environment, I think. I think we've got a lot to answer. But look at a modern house. Yeah. It's literally a box. Yeah. There's no attempt at, there's no little decorations around the windows, there's nothing about the brickwork that's interesting, it's just a fucking box. Yeah. Just like the flattest shit. It's only going to get worse. Make. Like even over here, they're talking about um, uh, like like doing like prefab stuff, ordering prefab right. units in from Literally Europe Literally slotting stuff. Yeah. together slabs yeah, of people like living in like, house, like um, the shipping containers yeah, now as pretty well. Much, yeah. yeah. Like there's this new development over the side of Bristol River and it's just it's like called the the boxes or something, you know, it's just shipping crates with restaurants in and stuff. And it's obviously like temporary, but maybe that's good because maybe the you know economy is going to not last the 50 years that it would have cost to build a load of shopping centers there and then re renovate them. You know, maybe that's the new thing. Maybe we want no, more pop up. It'll still be temporary. There. Any, maybe we should all be living in vans. Anything mm -hmm. that you think is, pop -up yeah. is not pop up, they're all permanent. These houses that we're living in now were built for railway workers and they knocked them up because they needed some cheap housing while they built the railway. A hundred plus years later, we're all still fucking living, living in them in this area and now they're worth a fortune. What is that about? We all, everybody, they will tell you this is temporary. It never is. Because once it's there, if you knocked it down, if it's popular, you'd have to pay to remove it. It's got to keep going. And then you'd have going. to pay to replace it. Much easier to just make do. Believe me, all these shit box houses are going to be around for fucking ever. And people just stuck with these ugly bastard buildings and bridges. Yeah. Anyway, I, I have no way to pick her up. It occurred to me, you know, all it would take is someone to just nod off for one second at the wheel. And the, the car's coming off the motorway at 50 miles an hour and plowing into anybody walking along this section of, of dual carriageway, which is, which is horrible. But also, she was doing prank calls. Now, <laughs> prank, she was, she was, she, when she was at her mates, they used what they refer to as an old timey phone. In other words, a landline. They called it an old timey phone. Right. Um, and they were prank calling people that they knew. So okay. they weren't just prank calling strangers like we How used to. How do they know? Today. Like, what were they calling them on a landline? Is why I didn't think yeah. kids use them. Yeah, I like. It. So that that's the whole point. Is they 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 thought it would be hilarious to use this old time. The number doesn't do come calls. up, right? Right. So there's the like number, the number. number does come up, but it'll just nobody's got your landline on their phone. If if you're a kid calling one of your mates on their phone and you're calling from a landline, they're definitely not going to have the landline number saved. They know all their mobile numbers, and it'll pop up. It's so and so, you know. So they were calling on the landline, presumably to conceal their identity. But like I said, they called everyone they knew, and they announced who they were at the start of the prank call, which I thought was also funny. The only person who answered was my eldest daughter. So my <laughs> youngest daughter prank called her. She was like, what? <laughs> when she realized who she was. She was like, oh, it's a prank call, and hung up. And they thought that was the funniest thing ever. Um, um, my eldest, I guarantee you, was not impressed. That is perfect. Man, that is I great. Feel like so it, wholesome. I feel like with the that. way the world is nowadays, like uh, like pranking could backfire so so badly, right? Like like when What's I when I was a kid, you, you prank called somebody, and it was like. You bozo, stop calling here. You know, like it was like old man, old man Magoo, the baker of the town, right. who, who would just get increasingly mad uh, that you kept calling him with like dumb names like they do on The Simpsons or whatever. Man, nowadays, right. like if you prank call somebody, you don't know who you're calling. 
it, like, it could be anybody. You know what I mean? There's like so, there's all sorts of weirdos out there. What are you right? talking about? It's the perfect time to prank call now because we've got what if Google you, Maps. What if you prank call we somebody prank call and you're like, the numbers oh, hi, are just this is so the, uh, available. Hi, this is the tennis club, and then they just they do a flip on you. They're like, what are you wearing? What? Um, you know what I mean? Like, there's just so many fucking weirdos out there. Like, your prank would just backfire immediately. You'd feel uncomfortable. Maybe that's a good deterrent, actually. Maybe all these weird, you know, fucking mole people that are beaten off, like, waiting for phone calls at home. Um, you know, maybe that's the think, deterrent. I don't think people... that It's hard to get people's private numbers, I think. And that I wouldn't so. be the prank calls. No, but, but I, think- I just think that nowadays, like... I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm I'm like more aware of it now that I have kids. But I just feel like everybody out there is a creep, and they're creeping. You know, like all like all the time. I like, don't know if they're creeping at work though. They're like on oh, their best. On. Even they're creeps creeping are like work. hiding it at work. No but way. When, like, what, are you, what do you mean? Like look at all like the 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 recent stuff, like with like companies and stuff. People being creeps and creeping out and stuff. Like, I don't think people can hide it. Like. No, it's, uh, that's it's, true. It's much more in the in in the uh, in the limelight <laughs> nowadays, right? So I'm just saying, yeah. be careful. You prank somebody, you got to know what you're getting into out there because you, well, you well, might just have like. I'm not going to announce my name at the top of the prank call, you know. Like, no, like but Kieran's even then, kids. like you, you know, you they're not going to know who I am. No, but they, they don't need to know who you are. They you could still be subjected to something that is just really uh, alarming and gross, you know, like. I'm just thinking uh, there's probably some some people out there that are just like waiting for this shit to happen. You know, they want to do the flip on you. But, um, you know, maybe that's <laughs> maybe that's maybe that's a fun thing for them to do. <laughs> like the, Their whole existence is just <laughs> to counter prank calls by being weird and creepy. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I, I feel like that this is the point that we're getting to quickly as a society. Maybe it's maybe I'm wrong to think that. But well, no, but actually, so I listened to this um do you remember Phone Jacker? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kai, and, Kai Van Novak, who's in What We Do in the Shadows TV show, big fan. Mm-hmm. He's just done a series of Phone Jacker. Phone Jacker on, was the, was the LCD, the look at thing, right? That was Phone yeah, Jacker? Yeah, so he's yeah. actually, he's resurrected all of those characters and he's done a load of prank calls and they're all very kind of wholesome in a sense because a lot of people in Britain know the Phone Jacker characters. Well, and what so, happened there? In Britain, you, what, in you, Britain, yeah, you. I went. I don't, I don't know. I went a bit. Kaya yeah, you're, you, Nova. yeah you're, I went a bit. Uh, Toby, Toby Tibbs. <laughs> oh, hi, it's. Uh, would you like to buy a used car from Terry Tibbs? <laughs> he went. He, got, he does all the voices, yeah. and I love. Yeah, I love him. He's he's great. Um, <laughs> I can't I can't turn it off. Ah, let me. So no, but um, big big fan of that sort of prank call show, and it's very it's very it's very historical, right? It's yeah. very out of date now. It's not modern, but it is so easy to just ring up p- weird places. Like you can find, you could just look at Google Maps and find like some quirky sausage shop or something or somewhere weird and, you know, ask them some innocent sort of silly questions. Uh-huh. It doesn't have to be harmful, the prank call. It's, it has to be. It has to be playful. You know, you have to try and make them laugh kind of thing. I don't know. Do you think some um, people are just asking for it? Like if you open up like a chakra realignment center or something like that, do you think that you might as well just... Sadly, I don't think people are prank calling those places. Really? <laughs> well, Man, they they that, that would have been like... Uh, that would have just been prime, that would be prime, prime real target. Estate. Yeah, like I would... I mean, yeah, but I think nowadays, I mean, if you walk down a high street now, have a look around how many places there are offering acupuncture... And uh, and all that kind of bullshit Nail bars Chinese and medicine stuff, yeah. crap. Yeah. Uh, they're fucking everywhere. I, I, there's like four around this area. So would you it's say the, would you say nowadays, based on that information, like uh, the the um, like the, the the field of pranking is is larger than ever. Like it, there's more, way more targets than there used to be. Because like I, I know with, that uh, well. I, there are mm. lots of YouTube videos where people prank spam callers. Um, so like they've got a target in mind now. There's videos where guys will take down these uh, scam call centers and stuff like yeah. that, which are which are really good. Yeah, um, there's a, there's a couple of classic ones we, where they waste their time and stuff like this yeah. deliberately, which is which is quite good to watch. But again, the thing is, it's it's real. It's like live stream stuff. It's real hit and miss. There'll be one funny moment in a six hour live right. stream. Oh, I know, don't know, man. Very... When I live stream, it's like. It's constant. Bam, bam, bam. It's <laughs> yeah. like joke it's like after a waterfall joke. waterfall of comedy just like slamming into your face all the time. Like, 
slap slamming out of your ass. I think people yeah. get exhausted I, after a couple of minutes. That's that's why they have to leave. That's watch, why they leave yeah, <laughs> this week. I watched. So I did watch a thing this week. You, you, me living in a, me res- recommending we all live in vans reminded me of this documentary I watched about the villages, which is this old people oh, retirement. Yeah, yeah. Mrs. F watched that. It's yeah, the she biggest. Said it was really good. It's the, yeah, it's the biggest like retirement area in. In, in in the world, I think probably it's is. huge. Where, so where, yeah. What country? The is this average in? age there, America. It's in Florida. The average age is like sixty five. Was it's like the oldest average age per capita in, in any location or something. It's, it's mad. It's, do you think that's yeah, good so, for so people to live like that though? Like, do you think oh. that's uh, healthy for them? You like not not, and I don't mean just physically. Like, I mean mentally and stuff too. Like, do you think it's do you, do you think that that's a like a good move to just kind of isolate yourself from society and only surround yourself with like uh, other 65-year-olds or whatever? Well, we're talking about a very specific kind of person. I- I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that if you want to live that way, you're more than likely quite a conservative person. Yeah. You want everything to basically be the way it was when you were younger. You don't like change. You resent young people and think they're no good and they're ruining things. But you, but do these people mostly probably have kids, right? Like Right, but their kids can just come and visit them. Yeah, they don't have to live with them. They don't have to see them day in day out. Right. And a lot of these people, they're, they're wealthy and they just want to be left alone. Right. They want to shut themselves off from the world and pretend like everything is smashing and go and live in a resort with other old bastards like them. What do they you do know, all day though? Just go. They golf play golf. And stuff. They fucking play bridge. They, you know, I know people. So that they live go like to this. it. So it's boring they, as shit. They, they they have like a store on site that they go to, and there there won't be any. You never need to any leave. Children. Not even a store. There. They have a town. They have everything. Okay, they but have a so, hospital and a church. So and okay, a, so I'm I'm everything. I've got I've got like ten kids, and we're visiting grandma at this old person's retirement place. Right. And sure. we decide that we need to go to the store and buy some candy for the kids. What happens? Sure, right? You go in there, and like old Mister Wilson is in there. You know, polishing his golf balls, and he's getting mad because there's ten kids in there. Like, is it illegal, or or do they make? No, I mean, I, it's still in America. No, I know, yeah. but like, <laughs> where where does it end? You know what I mean? Like you, like so. You're saying you don't? They don't want to be around other people. They, they're okay. They accept like the kids of the people that live there already. But I, I think I just don't want to be around. No, like, there are no kids that live there. It's a no, no. But for but for visiting and stuff, right? There's going to be people around. Oh, yeah. right? people you're not, are they're not visit. banned. No, I mean it's not like some kind of old people mafia where they're like, you know, you can't come in here, kid. I do, I just feel like old, if I was signing up for that, only. yeah. If I was signing up for that though, and I went to the store on the day where like you know Mrs. Mrs. Mullen's kids and grandkids were all visiting, and I went to the store and there was just like a million kids in there, I'd be pissed. You know, I'd be like, I didn't sign up for this. I don't want her I don't, I, I, army of kids I, who are visiting today to be here while I'm trying okay, to get my that's, on my this one bread. specific example of the family who has ten children. <laughs> yeah, for a start, that will be grandchildren stuff. I'm yeah, guessing yeah, because yeah, yeah. these old these old people will be will be ancient, and I, I feel like because it's in Florida, it's kind of out the way, right? They'll be visiting grandma for a day, and then they'll go to Disney World type thing. Right. I get the impression that the old people who live there are people who've either had their wives or husbands die or like they've just run or out just of people retired. or or they want to go somewhere hot i mean it's, it's a similar thing that happens all over the world where old people in britain used to sort of drift to the coastlines didn't they like old clacton and and these oh, sort of Bournemouth. Yeah. Bournemouth. and then lots of exactly. lots of people go to like spain and stuff too right they- exactly and i think that there's always going to be a place where old people feel like they want because they're sort of the, the number of people does tend to decline over time and um, when you're retired, you've got a lot of free time to do these kind of hobbies. And I think it's, it is that it's often these old folks being all in all these different social clubs, all kind of hanging out together, doing fairly gentle stuff. It's not like they're doing skydiving necessarily. Mm-hmm. Um, this, but I think this, I honestly there think are one for a lot or two. of people, this will not be a thing when our age group retires. I really, I can't I really think of anything that. worse, man. I don't want to be around people my age necessarily when I'm older. Like, uh, you know, like I've got kids. I just like I'd I'd like to be around them, and hopefully they'll have kids, and I'll be around them. You know what I mean? Like, it's just crazy to me that I, I can't imagine saying? it. I Your can't parents imagine. don't want to be around you. 
No, I mine know mine does. don't, but my mine are from a different generation. You know, like my right. mine are from the generation where I feel like they would quite happily live in what you guys are describing. Like they would. You're from a generation where you love your kids. They completely <laughs> would isolate themselves right. and like go to go to see Pixar movies where there's no kids there and stuff. You know what I mean? Like all the. I know that. I mean, my my dad basically lives like that now. Anyway, like, you know, all his mates are old, and he does old person things. Yeah. My mum would hate to be in a in a home like that like i think she she always says oh i hate me with a bunch of bloody old people like me and i'm thinking like I, i'm not i know i'm not old old but in in the job that we do and and especially when i go to an esports event or something like that everyone there is at least 20 years younger than yeah me. and i think it's good to hang around with with people that are younger than you i i, I truly believe that i don't no, think it I, is. and people that are means. older than you that you should you should not evaluate someone based on their fucking age no. or demographic or but that's what this is it's a selection process. I think it's the it's hobbies a, it's a, that like we're a, into though too cuz like I know sometimes I'll meet up with people that I used to work with who are not they don't game or anything and um you know they'll be like oh yeah I went uh I went surfing on Saturday or whatever like what'd you do it's like I just fucking Play played games. 12 hours <laughs> of games like like I do every day pretty much and like right. To them, they're just like, oh, how do you do that? How do you like sit there and do that? And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, what you? I, I think a lot of the hobbies what, that you play people a game come for five games, minutes. Like, it's not a, it's... right. But if you're fucking windsurfing with a mate of yours, you're not talking to them while you're doing no. it. It's a, it's a, it's a totally non-social event. Yeah. You want to go windsurfing? That's cool. But don't make out like you're doing it with other people. I'm sure if you go to the pub afterwards, that's when you have a laugh. But you know what? You could cut the windsurfing bit out. And just go to the pub. Yeah, well, most of them aren't mm. even allowed to go to the pub after, right? Because like their their pass for the day was the windsurfing. So like, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? Like it's 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 one of those, isn't it? I don't know, man. I, I, I feel think, like I think a lot of these social things are about finding your tribe, right? And it, 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 it happens a couple of times when you're at school. You know, you have to find the group of friends that you fit in with, and that does happen, hopefully, for for, for people. And then, you know, again, when you go off and go to university, you have to do that again. And then when you go to work again, you have to find these groups of people that you can endure and en enjoy <laughs> um, at the same time. And I think sometimes that ebbs and wanes. You know, sometimes you drift away from groups and find new ones. And the, the documentary, like the Villages one we watched, I can't remember what it's called. So how do, you, how do you figure something. that your tribe is just... 65 year olds who want, want to golf like what I, like I, well no because if no, you want to do that that's the thing they want who do that, wants to do bingo. that though like uh, no but no but they, listen these people this listen, this listen, it's not that it's like if that's what you want to do great perfect you'll golf but but if the documentary follows this old woman who's there yeah you know has lost her husband moved there still has to work you know and she can't she's struggling to like she's like trying to lots of different things lots of different ways to meet up and she's going through all these things and none of them are working. You can see she's miserable. And then finally, she finds one where she's basically like this place that just does barbecue garden parties and drinks margaritas and dances in the garden. Oh, perfect. And she's like, fuck this. This is brilliant. I found I found my tribe. And you can really genuinely see that she's perked up and she's actually so sort of So these people just, to find just have barbecue garden parties and drink. That's it. Drink margaritas. Yeah, oh, that, that, was, is, that was the that thing that she dream, wanted. Baby. Yeah. Let's go. That was, that was her, her jam. And so I guess, I guess the point is that this is such a huge, huge community. It's almost like a city of old yeah, yeah, people. Yeah, it's, it's huge. It's um, huge. Th there's something for everyone, and I, I and I don't know if that does extend to everyone. Sips, i.e., you know, if you want a very specific Fortnite based, um, <laughs> well, I mean, I'm really into really it that. now. So if, I don't if this know... is what they want, if this is the way people want to live, and they are willing to pay to do it, and they go to live in that place, fair enough. Some people just like a really quiet, boring oh, I'm life. Not, I'm and, not saying like, I don't that. have a problem. And they're scared. I don't have a lot a of old people it, are just... genuinely really scared of young people. It's it, Especially if, in America, I think, very, very scared of young people who are not white. Right. That's like, oh my god, the country's going to bits, because the, to them, it's like a 98.6% white area. That's That's the villages. So that's what they're aiming for. They just want they want to feel safe and be around other old yeah. people. There's so, so many factors that go into this, but you know, it's it, it's hot. That's a big one. Maybe their friends have moved out there and recommend it and they know them and they want to see them. It's an you know, old so they, uh, it's they a, like go. an old concept though, right? I mean, even Seinfeld. In Seinfeld they had all that. Remember with Jerry's parents and the and the the, the, <laughs> the, 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 the condo council and everything. <laughs> yes, like you're I mean, right. this, this thing has been around a while, but not good enough to live in Del Boca Vista. We're moving to Del Boca Vista. <laughs> <laughs> but I still, I, I just never understood. 
I, not, I don't know. Maybe one day I'll get there. But like, I, I just, I feel like, I feel like you're just cutting yourself off from so much living like that. You know, like. All right, let, let me just stop you real we quick. We live cut off, though. Hold on. That's how we like it Sips. at the moment. I, have, I only see my friends digitally. But to be fair, dude, you literally live in a garage and play games, and you always telling us how you do basically nothing. Yeah, I know. So in a way, if you are old, that wouldn't be an unreasonable place to live because you could just get a garage and do what you do and play games. And you don't be need chill to move to Del Boca house. Vista. You could carry on staying where you are. You'll be fine. Yeah, you know, I think it's. Right. I think you'll be like happy. I'm just saying, you're, you're doing now what they're essentially yeah, I, I know doing. I am, but, like, it's just, there's more to it than that, right? Like, what like what they're doing, you know, they're buying those fucking weird, like, white leather shoes that old people wear and, like, this, and like the, you know, like the baby blue slacks to go with them and stuff. Yeah, are, yeah sure. You know what I mean? Like, I, I find, I, like, all that stuff is just, is kind of weird, right? Like, yeah, okay, fine. I sit in my garage all day, but, like, you know, I'm wearing track pants and, like, I, like I'm talking, like, I'm talking to you guys so and imagine stuff. Like, in 40 years time mm -hmm. that will be the way that people i mean i can i can't imagine ever not being online yeah like you know in the future i'll still be playing games and i'll still be online and chatting to people and all the rest of it but i could also do that from my house but if if you know you get older you can't have stairs anymore because it's too hard to get up and down them you go live in some fucking flat house somewhere yeah. you sell up you want to buy somewhere that's nice with a little garden maybe you know this is a reasonable price you sell your house now you've got some money to live on you go and buy one of these houses and live in it i get it i, I mean it's boring yeah I, I hope i don't end up like that but i think most people just want to see out the last 10 15 years in peace yeah I suppose, yeah i suppose so yeah I, I, I think also it's they always say that you know your somewhat your brain is set in the, the formative years of the late teens to the sort of okay, you but know, nobody late, late, late nobody 20s. spent their their teens and late twenties wearing like the weird white leather shoes and you know what I mean? Like it just it's a departure. <laughs> I see. It's it's a huge Brilliant. departure. Like I I haven't departed that far from you know. Well, but okay, my Let me my just my, my teenage this, right? fashion sense, my teenage. There was a time cadence. Like when, it's, it's sure it's you can carry on wearing the that Nirvana shirt exactly. when you're uh, a lot of the old folks there are all wearing their, their they're not actually as out of date as you think especially some of them but but also but, um, look at the stuff they wore when they were younger it wasn't uncommon for men to wear fucking suits just to go to a bar well, you know? it's I like guess. this is the way people dressed they didn't they didn't wear sweatpants and no, no, shorts but the, and, like and the, trainers the, and people everything people who are sixty five to seventy year olds now are. Our parents, right? Like my parents weren't wearing right, a yeah. fucking suit to go to a bar. They they weren't born in the nineteen twenties. Like my parents were born in like right, right. nineteen fifty five. You know, like right, right. They but so they were they were growing up in the sixties. Yeah, and they 70s. were teenagers. So in, the stuff that they're in, like, wearing, the seventies, right? Like is I, I bet their fashion hasn't changed much since the eighties or nineties. No, no their my parents' fashion is like, and since I can remember, has been much older than they are. You know what I mean? Like they're they like they weren't right. wearing like they weren't dressing like fucking uh, like Jimmy Page and Led Zeppelin or whatever. You know what I mean? Like like my parents have always like just had you know like uh, like 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 old people clothes. <laughs> like they just they right. always have though. Like I I don't know. It's just I think it's just the default inoffensive. Nobody's gonna notice what you're wearing. Thing I guess so. Because if you're living in a community with old people and you turn up wearing Kanye West trainers right. and a gold sparkly tracksuit because right. that's what you feel good. And people are going to be like, what the heck are you wearing there? <laughs> Who do you think you're carrying? You're looking like some kind of a drug dealer or no, something. But... <laughs> I'm trying to get my head around the sparklers coming up your shoes. It's, uh, it's no, giving like, me uh, like so, some of my Some of my like childhood friends, their, their parents weren't didn't seem as old. You know what I mean? Like they were... Like 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 one of my good friends when I was a kid, his dad, um, and I think even still to this day, he's got to be like seventy now or whatever. But he always had, he always looked like he was like a like a roadie for fucking Van Halen or something, like the way he dressed and stuff. And like, sure, right. they've got you've got those guys. I they, those guys do exist. I, I think that you know it's not like no one's gonna complain when you move into the neighborhood and you go up and down the street with your Heelys. Do you know what I mean that you're well, you're, they will. I feel, feel like they will though. Like, quirky people. Because for me, for me visually, like like coming back to the the Seinfeld reference and the retirement community and stuff, like you know, like the clothes that like. 
Jerry's parents were and, and stuff like that, you know, like... Uh, that is 25 years out of date, though. Those, it that is, generation but I, think, but is I feel like they're still doing it now, though. That's what I'm saying, you know what I mean? Like, there is a little bit of cross-pollination downwards. I mean, the, but at the same time, I feel like the things that... I don't know whether it's just that we haven't discovered how comfortable those shoes are yet. <laughs> no, do you know come I mean? on. I just, uh, I want to know what point you decide that that's the play to, to wear those shoes and, like, and well, dress look, like I, that. I, I think it's a natural evolution, though, right? Like when I was a student, I didn't care about having a living a tidy, having a tidy house and, and, and everything was a shithole. And I, I lived in a mess and didn't wash my clothes. And it was, I was stinky and disgusting and greasy and gross, Whoa. right? But at some point, I just decided in my mid 20s, well, late to, or recently, <laughs> that maybe I shouldn't live <laughs> Two like weeks that. Ago. And I. I'm a lot happier. And I think like that's an evolutionary thing. I, I, it used to be a time when I would look at like a dad, a granddad with his, um, you know, railway set in the attic and think, God, that fucking loser. And now I think, <laughs> man, that's pretty cool. I wonder when am I going to put that together? I'm start looking at trains. You know, it's, there used to be a time when I thought Stifler's mum looked old. And now I think she looks great. Um, do you know what I mean? I'm just saying. Oh, I can relate to that. Wait, I gotta look up like, Stifler's mom. Hang on a second. <laughs> Who was Stifler's mom? Stifler. She's, she's a milk. Stifler's mom. Exactly. I, I I said this the other day. Like I was just I just oh, I, I used this to be. Woman, I'd look at milfs yeah. and be like, oh no thanks. But now I'm like milfs. Jennifer Coolidge. Sure. Let's do it. Jennifer Coolidge. So she she's obviously if you look at her when she was in American Pie. You know, she was she was fucking hot as anything. She was great actually in oh god, what was that show called? American Pie it was Reunion. Last year, no, it was a TV show she was in. American Wedding. About no, it was a T fucking V show last year, and she was like one of the guests at a hotel. Sure, I can't remember what it was called, and she was superb in it. She was like. Oh, she's just brilliant. She's she's a really good actor. Like a lot of actors, it's not until they're older that people realize, oh, they can actually a act. TV a show, yeah. Something. Okay, let me see. Jennifer Coolidge, uh, TV. It was called like White Lotus or TV something. TV show. Uh, okay, movies. She's been in a lot of shit, man. The Watcher. Yeah, she has. Ten year old Tom. The White Lotus. Here you go. White the Lotus. White Lotus. Twenty twenty one. Yeah, she was really Rick good. And Mort- really good. In Mor- Rick and Morty as the voice of Daphne, apparently. Right. Uh, uh, I heart Arlo. She was in Legally Blonde. Yeah, Bend and Snap. Any fans? Um, <laughs> My kids love that movie. She did the voice of Myrtle in The Loud House. I don't know if you ever if you remember that. She did the voice sure. of Caroline in American Dad. Okay, good. St- well, look, she's got a lot. She more. was in Glee. I'm, I'm good. For- she played Whitney S. Pierce for two episodes in Glee. S- still my favorite. There you show. go, fans. If you were worried about what she happened, she was in Napoleon Dynamite as the, uh, the voice of Mrs. Jane Moser. What? In, tw- what? in 2012? Apparently. Weird. Okay, good stuff. This week's episode is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Using the internet without a VPN is like leaving your laptop exposed at the coffee shop table while you go to the bathroom. Most of the time, you're probably fine. What if one day you come out and your bathroom is gone? Your laptop is gone. <laughs> <laughs> what, if, uh, what if you leave it in the care of a trusted... Like, okay, say your dad is visiting. Mm-hmm. What if you, your laptop is open, you're doing your very important uh, national security work on there, and then you say to your dad, Dad, don't let anybody see this. I really have to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Right. Do you think that that? Do you think he would be trustworthy enough? It's not to worth the risk. That? I think he'd have to do right. that on a dad by dad basis. What's the alternative? Right. That was your cue, Lewis, to to say that the alternative would be to use ExpressVPN. So oh, shit. I'll do it then. The alternative <laughs> is ExpressVPN. Uh, you could use ExpressVPN oh. to protect yourself. Tell me more. I mean, your dad's not even going to help because you're probably connected to an unencrypted network in that cafe or airport or hotel, and they could just get access to your financial details through there. It's like a 12-year-old can hack you. You've got to be so careful. Maybe it's an inside job. Maybe my dad's working for them. Probably. He's trying to steal... You know, steal that big big internet bucks. Uh, expressvpn.com slash trifles. You can get extra three months free if you join today. You can secure yourself online. You can use it on your phone, on your laptop, wherever you want. And I do. I recommend it. You should use expressvpn.com slash trifles. Thank you very much. Do it! Oh, summer is here, lads. The sun is shining. Finally, Shirts are off. I can finally take the safety off my guns and go out there and show off my big pecs. Your smooth, shaven body. That's right. Finally. Manscaped is here to make sure your beach 
buns are looking as smooth. I'm bringing them out of hibernation. <laughs> My balls have been hibernating. I shaved them. Free them. I am ready to reveal them. Sum summer scrotum, ahoy. Whip it out on the beach. Use it as a beach ball. You want to be out at the barbecue, not killing the vibe with your pubes peeking out of your swimming trunks. That's why Manscaped is here with their performance package 4.0 to keep the party in your pants looking crisp and refreshing all summer long. You can put some balm on them and then you can put some powder on them as well. That's right. And deodorant. De dive first, head first into summer by joining the 4 million men worldwide who use Manscaped. Get ready for Hot Guy Summer at manscaped.com slash Triforce for 20% off and free shipping. This is the summer to turn your package into the full package <laughs> with Manscaped. Oh, that's nice. Well, there you I've go. I've got a couple of quick emails, very quick. Let's do One, that. Before they're not we... very good this year, no, this week. No offense, lads. It's just these are boring I'm emails. not offended. No, I'm saying to the people I'm about to read their emails out. I don't know. I feel um, like we have a standard now, and if these ones are below that standard, I... I... They are far below okay, that standard. Okay, well, they we just... Could... Let's let's name and shame just, and, and just not read them quickly. and then move on. <laughs> Caleb, Caleb, uh, yes, I would say Yuri Gagarin and Neil Armstrong probably were also famous test pilots, but they were more famous for being astronauts slash cosmonauts, not for being test pilots. Even though most of those astronauts and cosmonauts were originally wait, test what's pilots. the context what's the, of this? What's the, what's the difference? A cosmonaut is a Russian astronaut. They call. Oh, wait, what's oh, what's cool. the debate here though? When did we talk about this even? Last week or the week before, we were talking about Chuck Yeager being the only famous test pilot that I could Chuck think of. Yeager. We couldn't think of any other famous test, test pilots. pilots. Oh, I don't even remember this yeah. conversation. Mm, yeah, so. right. you, were, you definitely spoke All about right. it. Well, we about, talked about it. What about that lad, um, Evil Knievel? Does he count? He was not he a test pilot. He wasn't a test. Pilot, he, he was a, a stuntman. Stunt man. He was like well, I guess he was like a Dave. daredevil. Yeah. Yeah. Like like the other, like the guy who fell from space. Super Dave Osborne. So Caleb, you know, is a all right, okay email, but step it up. Let's have some tales. I want stories. I don't just want I disagree or agree. We need we need content. That's not, yeah, right? not, that's, not even an email. that's a complaint. That's a complaint. Yeah. That's Next. basically a complaint. Uh someone talking about they digitize files for the NHS. Yeah. They're about oh. two weeks behind the current date, and the limit was to digitize week old documents so doctors could go back and make change before they got uploaded. That's it. Okay. That's it. Um, right. I've got a news article it. I've got. Yeah. Do you want to hear it? I saw this this Can morning. Can I just very quickly say, Go if on. you have an interesting email to send, people have been asking where to send them, perion.flax at gmail.com. That's it. Oh my God, man. It's my, the, the, the email address you can see on- You've opened in, the gates of hell, by the way. On, on, it, it's, it's there on Twitter. You can see it for all concerned. It's right there. Right. Wow. Just email there. We're, it has Thank been for years. Thank you for taking the falling on the sword happy of the mailbox. The, happy it's to very take kind the sword. of you. I don't to, mind. I don't mind. It's not my that. real email address. That's my work email address. <laughs> right. So ship them. So just yeah, please don't sign him up to stuff though, for goodness sake. Oh, it's too late. I've already been signed up to all the fucking things you could imagine. And somebody out there subscribed me to Rooster Teeth, <laughs> and they have been paying that subscription. Every month for about the last seven years. <laughs> nice. I don't have the login. I can't cancel Bonus. it. Bonus. So oh. whoever it was, thanks. You can stop. I've never been to the website. I've never logged in because you just signed me up. So I just get the email telling me that you signed me up and you're I've, paying um, for something. I've been signed stop. up to Scientology. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. I've been getting like the newsletters to the official Scientology outlet. Anything um, interesting? So I don't know who managed to do that. Um, Are you converted? Well, I I just well, I uh, it, uh, it's one of the ones I haven't marked, moved to spam automatically. Do you know what I mean? It's, so I just sometimes it's just interesting. Um, anyway, I've, I read a news article this week uh, about a woman uh, in in Seattle who um, dropped her mobile phone in the the to in the in a toilet in the toilet, um, but actually it was um, one of these toilets in a um, Na national park so it's like a wooden outhouse type toilet uh and she she tried to retrieve her phone so like a hole in by... the ground with a with yeah with like a wooden box built over it so she's like an adventurous woman she's out you know with her dogs yeah. and stuff um and she 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 dropped her phone in there and was like shit i really need to get this back so she took the toilet seat off and tied herself to the outside of the toilet with her dog's leads. Right. Um, and <laughs> reached in for it, but <laughs> it didn't work very well. Uh, the leads snapped and she fell in head first. Oh um, Did she die? She, however, found her phone right. in, the, in the toilet as she fell in. 
and called 911. Right. And uh, 15 minutes later, firefighters had arrived to rescue her. Um, out of the shitter. <laughs> Out of the shitter, yeah. Did she get any? What a slow did, week. It's been a did slow Did she get week. any infections or anything from like. That was Sky News this morning. Literally. It's being leave. caked uh, in like tons of, tons of mixed shit. Like it's not even just like one yeah. person's shit, right? That's like. I guess it's like a whole melange of, of, of a, a vibrant, you know, like. Yeah. Um, yeah, just a just a, just a smorgasbord. <laughs> yeah, it is just like a buffet of shit in there. Yeah, <laughs> like a like a bit of everyone's everyone's taken part to help. How long do you think that that shit, shit just is in there festering? Like they don't they don't do anything with those outdoor ones. They don't they, they empty don't empty. It. Them, I don't know yeah. if they, is, do they have a septic tank thing because I know you've got to get that emptied from time to time. Yeah, right? I don't the know whether she was like neck deep or like knee deep. You know, I don't know how much was in there. You know, yeah. but. I know people have have I'd be wretched. died in these. I'd be wretched. That would be a way to fucking. I'd rather live in the villages. Do you know what I mean? Than than die on a fucking mountain. Of course, an outdoor phone toilet. Out yeah. Out if your if your phone if my phone if you if, if you toilet, ever died in an outdoor toilet, email us. Um, that'd be a <laughs> that'd be a fun one to go even through. Even if even if it was like in reach, I'd just give it up. Do you know what I mean? I'd be like, do you know what? I'll just get a new one. Fuck it. <laughs> it it's, it's disgusting. Yeah, but okay. <laughs> the idea of getting it, what, I, it's never going to be clean. It's never going to be I would just clean. get a new one, but you you would constantly be thinking like, oh shit, if I don't go in and get it, what if somebody else manages to get it and then they hack my phone? You know what I mean? Like, there's too much on your phone now. It's too important to, to, to leave it behind, right? Well, no, but you could deactivate your phone from the new one, right? There's ways you can... Oh, you can? I'm pretty sure you can do well, you that. Like yeah, a you remote can log wipe? everything out and stuff. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> remote wipe, nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, you want to do that off your, your whole body if you get stuck in there. No, but the, the, I feel like um, I don't update my phone that often. This phone's like six years old and I, I like it because it's like I'm ready to have it break or or lose it at any time with a positive I'm like oh I get a new phone do you know what I mean not all these people who upgrade to my phone every year and I'm constantly scared about it right right I feel like I once it's a couple of years old I'm like oh fuck I don't care anymore I've, I've, I've got my money's worth out of it <laughs> if I if someone wants to steal it off me you can just have it I don't care just mm. <laughs> there's never yeah I, I don't I, I mean there's very few things that I would go through to retrieve a phone, and I, I would say dipping into a fucking public septic <laughs> pit of shit <laughs> is, is on the list of things I would not do. It's pretty high phone. up the list as well, I feel. It's like, very high Having up. said yeah. that, though, fucking, like... Come on, It's folks. gotta be... I don't, I don't know what the circumstances are where your phone is falling in there, like, um... Like I, I like I. Well, I mean, she was only apparently, like, 15 minutes drive from the fire department, so, I mean, like... It's... Well, they brought, that was a three-engine, all-guns-blazing response. A woman has fallen in some poo. Wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo. Here they come. <laughs> Lads sliding down that hole. <laughs> We've got to save her. She's literally nip, neck deep in shit. Help her. <laughs> oh, man. Well, no, but like, she that's was, not what they joined the fire brigade for. She was stuck, for, though, though, I guess, either. right? If she fell, if she fell in, was she like... Was she jammed in there? She just like couldn't get yeah, out. Yeah, apparently she tried. She she'd made a good effort to try and get out before the police were called. Did they recognize that effort? Um, like when they pulled her out, to say good effort, way to try to get yourself uh, out. We know it's tough. We've all been there. We've all fallen in the shitter yeah. before. <laughs> I guess it's like a spider in there. Thank God she had her phone though. I mean, yeah, you know, relief there. You know, in, in another day, you know, imagine imagine in another before mobile phones. If mm. she dropped her watch in there, or whatever, and gone in to try and get that, well, you know, mm. something equally valuable. You know, maybe maybe a, a hard drive full of Bitcoin. Hang on, um, <laughs> whatever. She's um, she might not have never got out. You know, she might That's still true. be in there. You know, slowly being covered in more shit. God, Just, doesn't bear thinking about. It doesn't. God, man, oh man, what a. What a what, what a what, what a, what a the, visual. When the Thames, when the Thames, I, I'm sure I spoke about this at the time. In, in a previous episode, when the Thames occasionally has a very low tidal uh, ebb and the, the water literally comes down to a trickle in the middle of the Thames, the whole river, certainly up by here, I, I'm sure it happens further down. You just see poops. Well. 
No, it, you just see pocket watches and eye glasses and sunglasses. Really? And and phones, yeah. So and the I went out. It, it's from people that have been on a boat oh. and have dropped something overboard. So someone goes to look at the water and their glasses slip off their face, gone. So if you go, um, this happened, this was in Richmond, oh, good four or five years ago now, we were there and the tide was like so low that there was no water. You could walk from one side of the river to the other. And anyone that's been to Richmond, this is a very wide part of the, of the Thames a lot around these parts. It's, it's a wide sort of part. Sounds quite and wealthy as well. <laughs> it is. To, yeah, it's all gold, just gold doubloons and things. Um, but it, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of a lot of stuff. And I, there was like, wow, look, there's just glasses and watches and cameras and all these kind of things like a selfie stick, you know, things like this that people just dropped in the fucking river. Um, it's quite a funny. A golden YouTube I, play I, button, I, just like the yeah. thing. <laughs> I was watching a video of this guy who does, I don't know what he, he had a term for it. It's like mud dipping or something like that. And he went out and he found all kinds of stuff uh, on the Thames, but in town, like he was he was in the city. He was quite near the uh, town yeah, bridge. Yeah, you and see it. There. There's these guys who do magnet fishing. I saw a few on yeah. TikTok and there's like, they lob this huge electromagnet into like a, a, a river and it just pulls up like fucking bicycles oh, and it's like, crazy. Crap, crazy shit. But the things, I guess all that stuff you mentioned is all plastic, right? So very little of it. So quite a bit of it, yeah. I mean, obviously the glasses are going to be, it's not going to be enough metal, I don't think, to be picked up by a magnet. I think um, even a wristwatch, like they're not metal straps, are they? Like they'd all be plastic time, straps yeah, and I think it'd be hard to get the magnet plastic, on yeah. the front it's of it. It's interesting when you Indeed. find this old stuff though, I guess, like, because you think, well, what's the story behind this? It's like, you know, when you're walking down the street and you just see a pair of underpants on the ground and you just think what's the story here? <laughs> i know or a how, shoe. Like, just how did one this get shoe. here you know like and like i just love to happened? do the video game like equivalent of clicking on that shoe and like winding it back in time and just discovering <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. the story <laughs> of where that shoe came from <laughs> just That's do why, a time you know when rewind thanos, when thanos had the time stone and they they i'm gonna spoil the end of the avengers end game here when he winds back uh, the time so he can retrieve the stone from um, uh, Vision's head because Red Sonya or whatever her name is destroys it, the Red Red Witch. He winds back time and everything goes back in that little bubble where he's controlling it. You could do that with the time stone. That's what Thanos should have been doing. Finding out, I'm here to find out how one shoe ended up. At how did McDonald's. Billy's bicycle you know, end up at the bottom of the Thames? Time. How did that bike get there? <laughs> oh my god. I don't know why he's a cowboy, but yeah. you could do a whole show. Yeah. Like if you had that ability, you know, you could do like uh, you could do like a reality TV show where you oh, could man. like cut, would cut to it. like the lore behind the item and stuff. And then like, uh, pawn you know it. what it would do? It would completely set Antiques Roadshow on its head. Oh, yeah. Because now you've got people coming in. Dressed like someone from the villages. Oh, can you imagine with that ability you went on there and you're like, you, you like the first scene is uh, you're speaking to the expert about what this might have been used for and who could have possibly owned it. You know, like, oh, yeah, this this vase ew, it would have been uh, owned by uh, ew, a, a very well to do old woman in uh in the countryside and she would have used it to store her uh, dandruff flakes yes. uh for for <laughs> some time you know like they always have this like this this right. unique insight into how this thing would have been used but then you turn up and you got the time stone and you're like okay let's see and then you do a rewind on the vase <laughs> and it just turns out that like you know some, Some guy, guy named Colin bought day. it <laughs> at the store <laughs> and uh, just like had it on his mantelpiece. I, I was thinking, you know, when they say, how did you come by this piece? They say, oh, I just found it in an antique shop. Let's find out. And they wind it back. <laughs> and then you are prizing it from a dying relative. <laughs> you to see like a murder <laughs> taking place. <laughs> yeah. Give me the fucking files. <laughs> and they're just red faced. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it cuts back to their expression of like, uh oh. <laughs> oh um, I'd love it if the show started with them like dredging the Thames, right? And then like going through all of the shit on that sort of forensic table. And then they could give right. this rusty old knife to one of those fucking YouTube who makes it all nice again you know and they could give like you know they could just like hand out all these bits and and value them all and you know yeah. oh, this is a skull from um some old fucker who f died from hundreds of years ago who didn't keep his mouth shut that's who it's from you just yeah. get gangsters to tell you where it came from 
Oh, this yeah. body, well, he didn't pay up on time. <laughs> <laughs> he was mugging me oh. off, is what he was. <laughs> <laughs> he was mugging me off. You get, you get all of Never the, mug all him the off. stories. I would love that. Oh, that's yeah, not, there's no that different too. game. Um, we need the tech. Yeah, we need the technology. But yeah, like a game with that. I mean, you kind of had uh, that. That was like Oberdin, right? Yes, pretty oh, much. Yeah, yes. Yeah, the whole yeah. premise of Oberdin was was just That's that. That's it. Yeah, God. Uh, but I then you had to game. fill up a storybook. Oh man, it was so fucking good. Holy shit! Man. He was working I on wish, that for uh, such a long time. Like, because when when uh, uh, Papers Please came out, um, I I streamed it like I was, I was one of the, the first people that streamed it i think because he stopped by yeah. and I, I chatted to him on twitter a bit and he did a tech demo thing of the Oberdin stuff just to show off the graphics engine because he was still working on it and that was, it was like years before Oberdin came out and i thought man yeah why is he taking so long you, you well, find he did out everything, why eh? yeah first of all yeah. it, it's L lewis de cope i think his name is it's a, so it's a one-man operation L lucas but also pope. yeah Okay, Lucas Pope. Um, yeah. So I don't know why I thought it was Lu L L Lucas Ducope. Or whatever. Um, <laughs> I don't know either. That's a, that's a, a yeah, just, uh, just gone. You just, made his, you just made his name a lot more flowery. <laughs> uh, very fancy. Yeah. I love it. Um, I, I saw that tech demo and I thought, huh, I'm not sure what to make of this. And, and then when the game came out, I thought, God, that took a long time. You, you realize why? Because the, there's so much to it. Like the plot is so good, and the the those sort of moments in the game where some big thing is revealed all the little touches I, I think he's brilliant i think he's absolutely brilliant and i think as a format though i think i feel like um part of part of why it was so good was because it was probably just made by one person absolutely and it was, a, it was you know, pure. Like a, a, a labor of love yeah. or whatever but the, the the actual format of the game i i wouldn't i wouldn't actually mind if a studio picked it up and just made lots of little yeah stories it was just you such know? a good just concept like, right yeah, really good concept, uh, like mechanics for a game, but just you could you could do it with so many other stories, right? Where you just right. slowly unravel Instead, the mystery and figure it out. Instead, we just have fucking hidden object games up the arse. Fucking <laughs> hidden yeah, object I, games. Honestly. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to play that. Fuck? I want to play There's Oberdin, but with really some cool different stories, you know? It would be really good. I just love the way that Oberdin um, rewarded you for figuring yeah. stuff out, you know, like where the book would like slowly complete and you had like the music and stuff. And it was just really satisfying. Do you know, wasn't do you know it? when it's I, really whenever good. I wonder why aren't there more of those games? I think it's because coming up with a really interesting story like that is so fucking hard that most games companies just can't do it. A hidden object game well, or some other a, game like that a, is dead easy. A studio would never work on that, though, right? Right, but I'm like, saying, why once, isn't this a genre? Like you said, like there should be more because games Because like once that. you have more than one or two people working on a game, uh, it nobody wants to work on that game. Uh, like, if you have a bunch of people together that cost a lot of money to keep together to work on something, you, you have to work on, on something you know is just going to shift a ton of units, right? right? but you would and, need a lot of people. Is, I mean, one line did. What I'm saying is, yeah. it, you know... These these games like that that could become a genre, why yeah. didn't they? There must be it must just be really hard to to execute. Yeah, it must well. be. I think yeah. that's it. Yeah, I think so. It's a shame. I would play more for sure. I agree. Like, I, By I the really way, that. just before we go, Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe is out. I came out yesterday. Um, yeah, I'm playing it. I thought it was a very very funny. Um, what, what's the difference? Basically, you know how there were like ten endings in Stanley Parable. Yeah. Uh, they've all been enhanced in some way and also right. you can do them differently and there's like a whole node of kind of new co it's called new content but it's all very self-aware kind of a it's kind of a cursed awareness of its own the stanley parable's own impact you know there's like a whole thing where you go through some of the steam reviews of it there's a whole the whole section about stanley parable 2 is like a joke but man i don't want to spoil it but it's 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 hilarious and um i made me laugh a few times so yeah i recommend you you i recommend you revisiting it specifically sips because i'd like to see there's a couple mm. of moments that really really made me laugh um, right i, I, I mean i like the first one was if you haven't played Trolley Problem, yeah, I uh, meant to play that actually. It's Alex, really, Alex really asked good. Me to take I, I streamed a look at that it. last week, and it was it was really good. Yeah, because uh, it's interactive on by. Twitch too, right? People can vote for stuff and whatever. Yeah, but I, I didn't do that version. I just played it through. Solo. I watched you stream it. So actually, you, you streamed that after last week's 
Triforce, and I, yeah. I, I was sat because I was going to have a chat with Sips after the podcast, and oh, I yeah, ended I up just watching up, your uh, entire yeah, stream. No, <laughs> Sips never I completely up forgot I had to go attend to a domestic, I and know. then uh, I, I it went on for like three mind. hours, and by the time I was done, I was like, oh shit, I was supposed to chat to Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was really I that. really enjoyed it. It was really some of the some of the questions it asked you are really challenge you. Um, you the know, trolley the problem that, ink, yeah, it's it's yeah, out now. That's Yorks like Games that one. And also, yeah, no, that's, I that's great, yeah. did a trolley problem podcast actually uh, as a segue. Oh, right, I don't know if it's out yet. Show off. But Go there's on. like a few episodes where they've talked to some some of the folks in Yorks about and some other guests about um, trolley problem problems. Uh, we might be able to get you on PFLEX if you want. Um, I, I said on uh, on the the Yogs uh, Discord that I'd be up for it, but I don't know. If yeah, it's good. We we love a podcast, so we might advertise that uh, in some way. But you, see if you can find it. Good luck to you. Um, all right, <laughs> take, <laughs> thanks everyone. Luck, yeah. um, we will we'll, see you next. We're week. done. We'll see you next week. All right. Goodbye. Peace. Bye. Bye. Bye.